I, was, I didn't realize I was a camera too. I thought it was just a little. Oh, light. is that okay? No, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> what is that though? The zoom. Hmm. So it's it's for bands. Hmm. So it's designed to get like up close to a band, um, and st still get the audio because it's got a good microphone on it. Hmm. So, yeah. So this is Justin. Uh, sure. We can talk to each other, but and he's already heard the question. Uh, what do you think happens after this life? So yeah, what do you? What's your take on that? Um, well, I don't really have any like spiritual belief. Like I, I don't believe that like our spirit or soul really goes anywhere. But for me, it's just beautiful enough that we go back to the earth. You know, like we just kind of decompose and go back and allow for new life to come from what we were. Yeah. So definitely, w would you say you're you don't have? There's not a part of you that's separate from your body. So as far as like decomposing, you're talking about. Your body, yeah, I, I don't believe that like once my body is dead, there's a piece of me that goes on living that goes on yeah. and just kind of exists on its own. And did you cosmically? Did you grow up being taught? I was raised Catholic. Uh -huh. um, like I was like an altar boy okay. for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, but then around middle school, I just I, don't know, I started drifting away from really like believing in God or anything. Um, yeah, but. Because to me, it was much more beautiful than, like, instead of being here for some divine reason, like, that we were just kind of making life happen and just going back to the earth that made us rather than having some, like, special mission. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. So, um, do, you, do you feel like, uh, so to, so to, so to actually exist for a creator or with the idea that that there is a creator is somehow flawed or like a like a bad way of approaching life maybe or so you're talking I, about like the beauty of just kind of what living in the moment kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, something like that. I don't think that it's a flawed way of viewing the world. I just think that it kind of takes some of the power away from ourselves uh -huh. because it doesn't just say that like we had the opportunity of making all of this, but that there's somebody up there who is like, or down there or in the trees <laughs> or something, but right. like some entity besides ourselves that's watching what we're doing and like approving or disapproving rather than us being able to exist and like take some sort of like, um, I don't know, to say that like we did all of this for better or for worse and we have to come to terms with the consequences. Yeah. Um, so the, be the beauty to... is in taking responsibility for And finding ways through it, or... I think so, you know? Yeah. Like recognizing that like we made this good and bad and we have the ability to make it better uh -huh. without just sort of like wishing up and like hoping that something better will be bestowed. I think it's... Um, I don't know, much more exciting and practical to feel that like we have the opportunity to yeah. change. You know? I, I, so I get in these conversations a lot and uh, a lot of people, so, so are you saying along with it you don't believe in God too? I guess I'm just... Yeah, I've, I've, well, I, but again it's a sort of like agnostic thing and like, um, like I won't say there's no yeah. God or anything. Which but, I believe is very wise as yeah, far as yeah. like, but, who, how, how much do we, you know, what do we really know? Yeah. You know? But for me, I can't go through my day-to-day -day life assuming that I owe it to something greater than myself. Yeah. Um, or at least that that something greater is like one particular person, uh -huh. you know, or like entity, Hello. what have you. <laughs> um, so is it the idea of being um, accountable to God or just uh, being under an authority like that? Is it... Is it the, the rebel within you? <laughs> I definitely have a bit of that. Um, yeah. But I don't know if it's like being accountable in that way or like anti-authoritarian, like exactly, but just that, um, I don't know. I just think that it's maybe not healthier, but for me, like more empowering to like live for myself and to live the best way that I can without having to feel like I'm held to some divine standard. Yeah. Like having to feel like I'm not living my best life because it won't get me into heaven in the end. Like uh, for me, it's more important to live my best life, to live something true to myself while I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. So I, what I hear a lot, uh, especially from people who are definite atheists, um, 
is that they don't need the reward of heaven to be a good person or to live a fulfilling life or the or the punishment of hell or the threat of the punishment of hell it's like and uh so i i haven't i, I don't hear you saying that but i'm kind of thinking that's maybe what you're thinking or not maybe yeah like there's like like why can't we just exist and be good people without having something hanging over our heads yeah or maybe I've just helped you or, to see. Well, <laughs> I mean, I mean, maybe, but like even beyond like being a good person or a bad person, yeah. it's just a matter of like being a person, a fulfilled person. Or yeah, a... yeah. And that if there are bad people, I think that under the assumption that there is a hell, there's no real price for them to pay on earth. You know, it's like with that understanding of things, it's you can let people be good or bad because the punishment will come at the end. They don't have to reform themselves in this lifetime. Yeah. Um, you know, if there's a hell, then the evil of the world will pay for it then. When we yeah. need to like try to work through that in our actual lives. Because this yeah. is the only thing that we can know. Like, there may be an afterlife, there may be all of that, but we won't know that until we're there. Um, but yeah. we know that we're here right now. Yeah. So this is what we have to work with. And, and so, and you've been, you've also been saying like things we've made. Are you talking about like, sidewalks and like humans imprint on the earth like you're not talking about like we made the earth or anything like that mm. but it's more like how we take no, care our of imprint it. on the earth but like we definitely have made the earth like we've shaped like you know it was here before us of course right, and like yeah. we grew up in it but we've kind of domesticated it in a very particular way when we made it our own yeah. we've domesticated ourselves in the same way yeah um, yeah yeah but so I don't know, like the uh, like the, the Christian perspective is is uh, that God has put us here to take care of it. You know, like we're caretakers of of the earth, um, the original garden. We were supposed to that, yeah. that was our purpose, and there was beauty and work. After man rebelled against God, it, it became a you know kind of drudgery. Yeah. You know, but uh, I but that, I believe it's yeah. There's there's value in that. Yeah, but but then like through the idea of original sin or something, then we just go through the rest of our human existence believing that we like messed up in the beginning and that we're constantly trying to repay for that mistake. But that's more of like, I think a personal struggle that it's imagined that we have to work through rather than like taking stock in the world that we have, like rather than trying to account for sins of the past of the first people, yeah. we have to account for like the sins of now. Yeah. Maybe like not in like a divine way of sinning, but like Do, do you corruption. feel like you're a good person? I mean, I like to imagine that I'm working towards something good. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, the reason, I mean, I'm asking is, um, you know, like, so yes, I, I do hear that like from, from a Catholic background, there's that idea of original sin, and, mm. and so that's like saying, well, we're blaming Adam and Eve, I guess, yeah. right, for sinning, and so we're guilty because they were guilty, yeah. right? Um, and so, th so I'm just wondering, do you think if it was, if you took that away, the idea that they were the first ones to sin? I believe if I had been them, you know, or if, if they didn't sin, somebody would have, and if it went all the way down to me, I probably would have been the one, yeah. you know? Well, because we're curious. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. the thing, like, that, that puts, like, a burden, like, that idea that that all happened and everything, yeah. that there is, like, this apple that you can't touch. We're just curious beings, like, we, we want to learn, we want to play, and to say that there's something out of our reach, that's just begging to be touched. Like, <laughs> that's an impossible task. Yeah. And. I mean, I, so there's the accusation that the God of the Bible has set us up for yeah. failure, yeah. you know, and uh, uh, created, you know, evil or created the possibility of evil. Mm. One thing it does say um, is that the minute they did sin, mm. their eyes were open and they knew good from evil, mm. right? And so what it's basically saying is that God, had, you know, like they knew right from wrong, good from evil. And throughout the Bible, you've got these references to that God has put his law in our hearts. So in other words, that's where our conscience, our moral conscience began. And so, so even to ask something like, are you a good person? 
I'm, ref- I'm, I'm appealing to your conscience, yeah. you know? And uh, so the Bible would say that came from God, you know? That we have a God, almost like it's separate from us. I'm, I mean, not even saying almost. You the Bible good would or say bad or? just the, the fact of good and bad is, is something that it's like there's a referee in our brain that tells us right and wrong and we you know we argue with it you know we're we're arguing with our conscience and we're saying well i think i'm i think i'm except from exempt from this rule because i'm you know i'm a victim or i i you know uh, my circumstances or i try to come up with reasons why other people should follow it but i shouldn't have to follow it you know and so we have that struggle that moral struggle constantly and um so just just to let you know where I come from is like as a Christian, my understanding is that all people have a moral conscience, not just Christians or religious people, but even atheists, right? Not even atheists, all people. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, that we're held accountable to whether we like it or not, and uh, and the problem of religion that all religions are trying to solve is we don't follow it. You know, we know right from wrong. And we may disagree on the details, you know, different cultures, you know, there's different ideas of what that means. But in general, we have a sense of accountability um, to, to, uh, to, to a higher authority. And, and so how can we justify our existence if we've failed, what we, if we've done things that we know we ought not to do, or if we fail to do things we should do, you know, but fall short. Mm-hmm. So. So that's the struggle, you know, and I, I, I don't know that it can be answered outside of religion, you know. How can... I haven't met anyone Sorry, put yet. put that again, put that again. I don't know that, um, that the problem, the, the universal problem of mankind, that we know right from wrong, but we don't keep it. Mm-hmm. How, can, how can we justify our existence if we're breaking it, you know? To... One way, I guess, would be to deny that God exists and that there is right and wrong, you know. I have never met an atheist yet who isn't somehow trying to be a good person. Whenever I get in, you know, discussions about it, they're you constantly feel, trying to, like, justify it themselves. Yeah. But you're posing good as a sort of cosmic good, where by the universe, even if not by a god, in particular, but we're kind of holding ourselves accountable to just the sort of universal notion of good and bad. Well, it, it would be the Christian, you know, I hold to the Christian view is that mm-hmm. God put that there. So it is mm-hmm. from God, but um, but it's universal because all people feel it. Now, do you, sorry, do you believe that um, animals are held in the same way? That um, No. I mean, they they operate by instinct. It's probably one, of the, probably the main thing, or I don't know if I'd say main. One of the main things that um, separates us from yeah, their man, existence is just know, reflex. Animal. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just just had a family member pass away, our our dog of 14 years, and and. All dogs don't go to heaven. Is that? <laughs> I've I've had that conversation mm. <laughs> recently, but um, I so my my take on it is why not? They're not sinful. Mm. See what I'm saying? Like heaven is a place where God, the Bible refers to it as the kingdom of heaven, right? God's kingdom. Mm-hmm. In a kingdom, there has to be a king. That would be God, and the king. You know, it, it's a place where the king is obeyed. That's, that's what the kingdom of heaven is. I can't see animals disobeying God, you know? I believe that only we can be held accountable for the sins of the world, that animals are simply existing. You yeah. know, but we are, through our conscious minds, laying something atop the world that wasn't necessarily meant to be. Like, we have our own plan for things, where animals just... They just exist. They're part of it. Yeah. yeah. And we've sort of, like imagined ourselves above all of that um i don't know i think uh i don't know if this gets to the heart of like the good or bad conversation but i think that to work towards like finding goodness in oneself is maybe to try to get back to that 
instinctual part um, rather than um, understanding the world as like something to be yours um, at least for a little bit um, existing in a sort of like harmony with it mm -hmm. um, and like finding a power and maybe a goodness a peace in that um, an interesting take on it. I, well I, I, I <laughs> I'm coming to all this from a very particular perspective uh -huh. um, um, <laughs> um, so what I do I can turn that off no no it's, I mean it, it can roll that's fine okay. but, um, it might be and, and, and once I post it if you don't like it I will take it out no I'm, problem I'm sure so. I'll be fine with it <laughs> um, but what I do um, I'm a clown um, but the way that I understand clowning um, it's not as a sort of character performed um, but more of like a headspace existed through kind of like an altered state of consciousness um, and that in that headspace you just sort of you enter a sort of different mind similar to like meditation or hypnosis something like that but it's a mind that helps you see the world in a new light because and that, that's sort of what I was trying to allude to with the thing that I was just saying I didn't uh -huh. say anything about the clown yet but yeah um, now you're saying you you put on a mask um, put on the, well, I, I do makeup and everything, makeup, but that, I mean. that's mostly for like video's sake. I think it's useful to ha when you're making videos as a proper clown uh -huh. to have a distinction between yourself and your clown. Yeah. But the most beautiful thing about it is, and from the first class that I took, the thing that opened me up to it, the first time that we clowned in that class, we didn't put a nose on. Uh -huh. We were just asked to clown as ourselves. And doing that, I climbed on top of a table, and then I was on top of like the mantelpiece of a fireplace, just to like keep a little coin or something away from somebody else who was clowning with me. Yeah. And then when I came out of it afterwards, I just realized like this is a way that I never would have experienced this room, I never would have even thought to, had I not been in that headspace. Okay. And then it took me some time, but then I realized that that's kind of how everything is, you know? There's like a way that we're expected to exist, yeah. and a way that we can exist. And I don't know if that's divine or cultural, yeah. um, but I think that for me, the important thing is finding the freedom in ourselves, I mean, finding the chance to be, um, and to open ourselves up to all of these new opportunities for play and discovery and creativity that can potentially lead us to a new cultural or social Maybe future, you know, like, yeah, and... yeah. I think it's like a, a new lens, yeah. um, a useful new lens um, to help to find something new, ideally something good, because I think the thing about the clown is, if it, and this is all me speculating, yeah. <laughs> but if it does get us back to a sort of instinctual base, um, mm -hmm. then it can't be an evil being, you know, because it is just existing alongside everything else. In some way, it's still imposing itself on the space, but everything does. These trees are imposing themselves on me right now, but I'm not cutting it down. I'm not... Yeah. But, you know... There's an sorry, innocence I'm, there that... Uh, a certain naivety. Yeah. And I'm not suggesting that we should be existing in that naivety all of the time, yeah. but that going into that may help us to reflect and take accountability for the things that we are doing during our rational everyday existence. Um, I'm kind of thinking once we've taken the, I guess you'd say, I don't know, the red pill or the blue pill of, yeah. of humanity yeah. that we can't go back. <laughs> mm. Once we've, once we're not innocent, yeah. we can't regain our innocence. That's That, mm. that would be my initial take on that. But. Um, well, I would say that the clown red-pilled me, um, but that it did so in a way that helped me get back to that okay. innocence. Um, I know I feel different like if I have a, a costume on or disguise. I feel like the expectations of the world are different or I can be a different person. Or, yeah. But... Yeah, but... Again, like the thing that I'm really trying to share with the clown is not that it's a character. Like, I'm not assuming this that I, I do wear like character. a costume and makeup and everything but it's still my mind it's still me I used to do theater I'm not up on the stage anymore I'm not doing all of that I'm bringing it into the world not acting as a character but existing do you do this professionally another, I mean do, do you get um, paid well, to do this no oh. <laughs> um, so it's but not it's like just, you're a party guy you're like a party clown like birthday party no or no I no it's I, not yeah like I, I don't I don't juggle I don't do right. things like that I mean I have like 
put on like a little magician costume and I went around with a fish at like an art show or whatever. Like, yeah. It, it, it's definitely more like art world um, piece of shit. Um, <laughs> um, I very not too many people watch these, but <laughs> no, <laughs> so that's don't worry not. about it. Maybe I'll get you some views. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, well, they're getting real now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so do you, I, I wonder about your understanding, like, cause, cause I'm a, I'm actually a high school teacher mm-hmm. and as a Christian, I come across a lot of people that just, they've rejected Christianity and, and now in our culture, it's becoming very easy to do. Like it's, it's the thing to do is reject it rather than the thing to do was, was just automatically assume you are a Christian. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's it's not the the thing to do, but um, I'm wondering. Do you would you say you, as far as religion is concerned, would you say that you understand Christianity, like the basic gospel message, like love thy labor like, type deal, mm-hmm. like kind of treat others the way you, or that God wishes for you to treat them that. We are created in the image of God. So, so, so we some of the morality, you definitely. Did you go to a like a Christian school, high school, things like that, no. or not Christian, but Catholic? No, I mean, like I said, like not that I, they're different. I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I was a Catholic, and oh, I, I was confirmed in eighth grade. Like I went all through CCD and everything. Okay. Like Sunday school for every day, well, for Sunday for years. Yeah. Of my life, altar server, but I just mostly thought that was cool being an altar server, you know, rather than just sitting back in the pews the whole time. Oh, yeah. It's cool to be up there, you know, yeah. ringing the bell and yeah. feeding the body and blood and everything. Yeah. Hey, I, I really thank you for standing here. You must be freezing. Yeah, it's my hands so, are cold. Yeah. yeah. So I want to say I, I, um, I have four lessons that I take people through mm-hmm. as far as, like, from a person who's a Christian, like, from the inside. I, 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 I feel like a lot of people have taken like world religion classes and they learn about different religions from the outside Mm -hmm. and and how can an instructor really do it justice so i i like to you know i i i probably would give you like a nutshell version of the gospel you know um here but it's cold out (laughs) and so i just want to say i'll leave you my information and if you're at all interested i i've met people at the coffee shop or wherever and um but I just feel like it's not something that can necessarily be communicated in sound bites. It's more like to, to explain, you know, Christianity. But a lot more people, far more people than not, get it wrong. As far as thinking Christianity, like other religions, is a set of things you have to do in order to hopefully go to heaven. There's a lot more, or it's not even more than that. There's a there's a whole different direction. I'll just say real quickly that I became a Christian in my late teens. And from that moment on, it was like, I'm going to heaven. How can I respond with gratitude? You know, like, it, it's like, it's not like, what do I have to do to get to heaven? How can I it's more like, yeah. heaven's been given to me through Christ, through faith in Christ how can I show, you know, like, he gave his life for me, how can I give my life for him? Like, what can I, how can I respond with gratitude? See, I, I don't mean to cut you off, sure. but I feel like I'm working towards something similar, but in my own way, like, through the clown. Like, I'm grateful that I've been given this world, and I'm so sad to see the way that we treated it, and yeah. in some way, I would like to give myself back to it. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's, like, a selfish thing, um, but I would like to do that. But I think I don't know why it would be. Well, because it puts a lot on me, uh-huh. you know, to say that I don't know. Maybe it is like a personal journey or something. But or I like, think the like clown to, is to feel like there's something I've done or given or achieved. Or, um, yeah, know, like like like, like, like yeah, like maybe it seems like oh yeah, I'm better than these other people because okay. I've found this I'm not, oneness. I'm I not, found this. I'm not one of the no. masses. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah. I. Um, but I'd like to, I would love the chance to explain that more, you know, and, and so, um, if you're interested, but, uh, but I don't want to, uh, wear out my welcome here with the cold. No, that's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not too bad. You, you, um, are you from, you must be from Chicago. I'm from Rhode <laughs> Island. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I will say something. Sure. Um, that I also 
uh, like I like when I gave up like um, being Catholic in middle school, I also gave up any sort of like spirituality or anything. But in the past year, I wouldn't say I've become spiritual, but I've opened myself up a little bit more. Like, yeah. The, the clown honestly helped me find something more of that with the world, it's like a sort of connection with everything. And yeah. I don't know that I. I believe in this, but um, the other day one of my friends was telling me that they believe that they remember when their soul entered their body, and their idea was that there's maybe a sort of like cosmic consciousness that exists, and we as young children uh-huh. are just the same as animals, like we're just existing off reflex, and when there's a particular point where cosmic consciousness energy comes into the body and exists through us yeah. and I just don't know how to feel about that because then it kind of seems like everything that we're living out on earth is just the working through of some cosmic struggle you know like if if that sort of cosmic consciousness is true then up there in the universe it's all gray and then when it's distilled into the human body it Maybe there's a little more black or a little more white. And so we become what up there, immaterial, was able to simply be as us. It has to, has to exist in like a particular finite way. Mm-hmm. And that that's what would cause all of our problems. Um, just the rattled around I mean, nature of things. But. Yeah, I mean, we're in a physical realm and there's yeah. there's scarcity of resources yeah. that, you know, yeah. turns people against one another or different moods physically, you know, we're, we're, we're very much affected by our physical bodies. Yeah. And so it's hard to be just a spiritual being if you're in a physical body yeah. where you're suffering if you're not taking care of it, you know. And, things like that yeah so. but the issue is that we, we we treat ourselves and our civilization as though we are infinite in some way like or that the world is infinite you know just endlessly extracting for our own gain without any recognition of the cost um, just due to greed and, yeah um, and it's pretty hard to get out of that like I feel like we're part of a I mean, I guess I could just sell everything I have and just give everything away, but then I would become a person who's needing others to give, you know what I mean? Like, the, yeah. I'm not sure that's the most responsible thing either. It's hard to figure out, like, talk about carbon f- footprint or whatever. It's like, how do, we, how do we escape the fact that we're taking from this world a lot of things, you know? Yeah. Um, for me, uh, to, there's, a, there's actually a church near here. It says, this progressive Baptist over here, I saw on, their, on the side of their building, it says, the gospel changes people, and then it says, people change the world. Mm-hmm. And so for me, as a, I'm a high school teacher. I, I, I believe that I'm doing good by educating and by yeah. teaching, reading, and you know all the things that I do. Yeah. But also as a Christian, and having conversations like that and getting people to think about it and, and trying to teach the gospel in a correct way where people, you know, have a right understanding of it. I feel like I can help. So believing in God, that God changes lives, I can help people put their faith in God and then through that faith, they'll, they'll change the world for the, you know, they'll improve the world for the better. So I, I feel like I can be a part of that it's not my work it's not nothing I can do but yeah. um, it's uh, something that I can participate in yeah. you know for me it's a little bit too much to imagine that we can put this burden on the individual like um, for a long time I was of the belief like um, as like an environmentalist or whatever that like oh yeah if we take this individual change if we just recycle take shorter showers then yeah we can like help solve the problem we can but save the world it's a problem of global <laughs> capitalism and yeah that's what has to be worked on and worked through um, rather than trying to say like oh no all of these really petty little things that we're doing in our individual lives just simply by changing those that that's what it's going to take to change the world like really the only thing that we can do is like as individuals come to this sort of consciousness um, whether through Christ 
or just by looking at the world mm -hmm. um, and recognizing that things aren't as they should be or rather as they could be and as they ought to be mm -hmm. and that we have the opportunity to shape a better world not through our own individual life choices but by collectivizing and saying that this that we refuse really to keep living in this you know current state mm -hmm. um, and that that's the only way that we can find a way forward and maybe you know i think really we have to try to tackle it from all angles mm -hmm. for me i'm working with the clown i don't have any problem with other people working through it with Christianity, mm -hmm. you know, not there's not one solution. We are so infinitely unique mm -hmm. that I can't say that the clown is going to work for everybody. Just in the same way that you know, like it's it's such an absurd. I mean, niche. what does the clown do anyway? Like, uh, so. Well, I mean, not... like I was saying, like for me, just help it. Okay. Well, well, sorry. What, what would I mean, you take from you, what I've It said? helps you personally, right? But. How does the clown affect other people? I, well, I guess the thing that, I'm that yeah, well, I'm right now. I've mostly been doing it on my own, but I've held uh -huh. some classes, some sessions to get other people into that headspace too. Oh, okay. Um, and that's what I think is most beautiful and exciting about it is not just me demonstrating the clown, but opening other people up to that new way of seeing the world too, okay. to find a new way of understanding themselves and of the opportunities that they can have to exist and play and be free in a way that we're not allowed to do as our everyday selves. Um, and like in like these classes, like people have said afterwards that like they've never felt more human or that they've never existed this way like in their life. Yeah. You know, it's like we are living as this one facet of ourselves and the clown opens us up to another way of being. Um, and I think that that's exciting because it shows that the world that we're living is just one facet of what could be and that if we can imagine something new and make the world change according to our changed mind then the world can become something more in our light rather than something that we are sold and made to buy into yeah so you definitely have a purpose in life to improve the world i guess leave it a better place than I think, I, think, um, I think that's all the best we can hope to do, like, as individuals, like, not hoping to change the world, but hoping to be a light of hope, yeah. you know? Like, things may seem dark and dreary, but I don't think now is the time for pessimism. Um, yeah. It's the time to see that there is a way forward um, and to take that challenge rather than just feeling defeated, because it, it's so easy to feel defeated. I'm curious what your major is. Um, performance and video. Um, and you see yourself as a career in that, or? I don't know how I'm going to do it as a career because that's the other thing about what I'm doing. Like, I would rather not make it into a commodity. You know, I don't. You know, like yeah. I, like I just think that I would like to share this with people because I think the thing is that with all of this creative energy that we have. Um, like arts classes are being cut from schools and everything like that. People aren't allowed to imagine themselves living a creative life. And if they are, it's necessarily commodified. And then everybody has to look at the person who did make it big and it's just a dream for them. Like, oh, I wish I could be a famous singer, but I could never do that. Rather than just feeling a creative impulse in themselves and doing it because they want to bring something into the world because I think that's what we all deserve to do whether maybe people believe that that's through children you know that we different, bring different something ways, into yeah. the world but I think that the creative impulse is the most beautiful thing that we can bring the well, you bring a world. lot of uh, energy to your message here <laughs> I, I can't I'm so cold <laughs> yeah and, I'm sorry and, I'm sorry and I'm I can't sorry. believe you're yeah. you're, uh, I'm just, you're not I, yeah this, well I, I, <laughs> but I, I am but this is that. just where my mind is running yeah and, um, yeah. yeah. So I'll leave you my information, <laughs> okay. and um, um, yeah, I think you might find it interesting. Um, the, the YouTube channel, I I usually write something about each conversation, basically one point, trying to relate it to some something that we talked about. Yeah. I'm not sure what I would write about here. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, 